Where can you go ice skating, then walk outside of the rink and lay out on the beach? It's been a year and a half since we showed the St. Pete Pier in our St. Petersburg License to Chill video, a month after it opened. But since that time, the pier has become a pretty happening place. Knowledge is power, children. Remember that. Today, a short video before we head to Miami. The cities of Tampa and St. Pete, like a good marriage, provide a contrasting complement to each other. Tampa has the modern marketplace style eateries with a two and a half mile river walk. St. Pete, the more artsy culture destination with a huge pier and plenty of green space. Today, the new Cross Bay Ferry connects the two complementary cities. In this video, we're going to show what is quickly becoming one of the most visited piers in the country, the historic St. Pete Pier, with plenty of entertainment from artists, magicians, acrobats, and more. A marketplace of local vendors. Enjoy the nature with pelicans and water scenery. Museums and many aquarium. Playgrounds, kids activities. A water fountain. Casual eateries, tiki bars, fine dining. And if that isn't enough, we will then hop on the new ferry that you can now take across the bay to Tampa, where we will explore some of the options for water fun along the river walk, the restaurants, the bars, then head back across the bay to St. Pete and show the street performers along the pier. Have a great rest of your day. So join us for a day of recreation in Tampa, St. Pete, the pier and the Cross Bay Ferry. And I think you will see why we love Tampa Bay. A look at the pier with shots from both the ferry and Pier Dolphin Cruises, which operates a 90-minute day cruise around the pier. Then out in Tampa Bay to see the dolphins, $39 for adults or $19 for kids 4 through 17. Or try a 60-minute sunset cruise, $30 for adults, $17 for kids. The St. Pete Pier opened in July of 2020. At that time, there were mixed reviews, people really only looking at the aesthetics of the five-story structure that sits at the end of the pier and judging it only from an artistic point of view. But really, that is only one small part of the pier. The new pier encompasses so much more. It is 26 acres of waterfront activities and green space. The pier operates 30 minutes before sunrise and closes at 11 p.m. Although you can walk out on it at any time and it is completely free. It is also dog friendly and plenty of places to sit. A sloped grassy area with umbrellas that you can easily open to have a picnic or just chill. I noticed a lot of people walking their dogs long distances, sometimes on hot pavement. I recommend this backpack. It's a Kurgo G-Train. It has two compartments, one for the dog and one for your stuff. For me, I like to put my stuff in the dog compartment and put Bella in a regular compartment. It provides a better center of gravity. It has two durable front straps, really feels secure. I put a link below. The umbrellas are absolutely free. When you are done, just fold them right back down. And if you forget your suntan lotion, no need to worry. With free nifty dispensers on the pier. There are two parking lots on the pier. Parking at the pier is $2 per hour for the first four hours, or a six hour maximum is $15. The parking lots are accessible by 2nd Avenue Northeast. The Dolphin Lot on the north side of the pier, near the Museum of History, and the Pelican Lot located near Doc Ford's Rum Bar and Grill. Part of this lot has a covering, so if you wanna keep your car in the shade or a covering for the rain, if these lots are full, there is also Demons Landing Park south of the pier, or metered parking along Bayshore Drive. Also 5th Avenue Northeast, near the Renaissance Vinoy. Duck Ford's Rum Bar is one of several great spots for waterside dining, or you can dine indoors as well. They have a pretty good menu, but famous for their mojitos and Yucatan shrimp. Also next to the Pelican parking lot, the First Flight Sculpture, 
commemorating the world's first commercial plane flight, piloted by Tony Janus on New Year's Day 1914, when he flew round trip from the Spear to Tampa. The Benoit Plaza tells the story of that historical flight. We are also going to be taking a round trip tour to Tampa in just a bit, only by boat. Between Doc Ford's rum bar and the pier is this little area with wooden beach chairs to chill and enjoy the view. The length of the pier is a half mile long, but a free tram is available to ride to the end of the pier. On the end of the pier is a wide fishing sightseeing deck with steps and benches for sitting and a fish fillet area. Also here, Gator Jim's Bait and Tackle Shop with lemonade, hot dogs, or corn dogs. For a little more, on the other side is the Driftwood Cafe with ice cream and snacks. Upstairs is Teak, a fine dining restaurant on the fourth floor. Or kick back at the Pier Tiki, a modern classic tiki bar. Which was where I ran into Jamie, one of our subscribers. There are also food trailers on the weekends to get a quick bite to eat. The pier really comes alive on weekends and holidays with street performers from all over the country. Yep, that's a running chainsaw that Alakazam is juggling there. He's from Australia. Meet Nick and Jennifer from Minnesota performing on this day. Nick, a magician, a master of sleight of hand, and his wife, Jennifer, a caricature artist. Nick here is swallowing a balloon of death. We saw him in our Lake County video a year ago, and Lord willing, we'll see him in Mackinac City, Michigan, this June. There's Leah Orleans, who's a tiny girl, but puts on a big show. It's always good to bring a little cash, to show some love to all these people who entertain. On Friday through Sundays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., at the gateway to the pier, the marketplace, a lively bazaar, features an array of local vendors selling unique items under tents. The Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center is located midway up the pier. This gallery features an estuary habitat that showcases a variety of species found in the local waters, with interactive displays, video presentations, a touch tank, only $5 for adults, $3 for Florida teachers, active military, and children 4 through 12. It is here you can book an eco-vessel boat tour. $22 for adults, $16 for children 4 through 12. $3 discount for seniors, military, and Florida teachers. All along the pier there are these huge pelicans, like Oscar here, who is telling me how he likes to hang out near the pier because the fish are delicious here. There is a picnic area, a large soft surface playground. Kids activities. A play fountain for kids of all ages, including me. And the Spa Beach Bistro, where you can pick up some stone fried pizza with live music. Why, there's Thunderbug, the real champion Tampa Bay Lightning mascot. Well, we still have a lot more things to show you around the pier, but first, let's hop on board a ferry. The Cross Bay Ferry Dock is located between the pier and the Renaissance Venor Resort along Bayshore Drive Northeast. Currently, the ferry operates from mid-October to end of April, from Wednesday through Sunday. Also runs for Tampa Bay Lightning home games. This particular boat returns to the Cape Cod area in Massachusetts for the summer months. However, there are plans to make the Cross Bay Ferry year-round by 2024. You really can't beat the price, $10 for adults, and $8 for seniors, military, college students, and youth 5 to 18. It is a scenic 50-minute ride across the bay, cruising at 33 miles per hour. It's a pretty smooth ride. Snacks and drinks are available on board, with a full-service bar with beer, wine, and mixed drinks. You can also bring a bike on the ferry. Helen and Harriet, St. Pete residents, enjoying the ride over to Tampa. Approaching Tampa, it sails through the channel, with Davis Island on the left and Harbor Island on the right.
To the right, the American Social, a waterside sports bar. And in the distance, Amelie Arena, on the other side of the Marriott Water Street and the JW Marriott. The ferry terminal in Tampa is in front of the Tampa Convention Center. Next to the Convention Center is the Sail Plaza, a 360-degree open-air waterfront dog-friendly bar with TV screens to watch the Bucks, Lightning, and Rays games. Also here, Big Rays Fish Camp, a counter-serve outdoor restaurant serving fish, burgers, sandwiches. You can either walk the two and a half mile scenic Tampa River Walk or at the Convention Center Marina, you can take the Pirate Water Taxi. An all day hop on hop off pass is $25 for adults, $15 for children. It takes you to 14 stops along the River Walk. From the Aquarium and Sparkman Wharf, another entertainment area, to the Armature Works with an upscale food court in a historic brick building. Sit out on the Hillsborough River along the western end of the River Walk. Also here, Eulalie, a rustic chic restaurant for native Floridian fare with house brewed beers. And in front of Eulalie's, another artificial turf area with lounge chairs. At the Convention Center Marina with Tampa River Walk Boating Company, you can rent these two person mini power boats. $79 per hour or $149 for two hours. For a larger boat, for up to 10 to 12 passengers, there is eBoats Tampa. $89 per hour for a standard boat. $129 per hour for a premium boat. Or if you would like some cardio, try these pedal boats with Tampa Bay Water Bike Company. $30 per person for one hour or $45 for two hours. And they are dog friendly. Single and tandem kayaks available from Tampa Kayaking Company. I'm going to have to take advantage of these water recreation rentals when we do our Tampa 2022 video in a couple of months. Just over the bridge from the marina is Harbor Island with Jackson's Bistro with a scenic waterside dining patio. On the other side of the bridge, the Marriott Water Street. We will also do an update on the Tampa Water Street redevelopment. It's coming along nicely. But for now, let's hop back on the ferry and go back to St. Pete. For boat tours in Tampa, there is also the Tampa Bay Fun Boat, the Lost Pearl Pirate Cruise, and the Yacht Starship for dinner cruises. As we sail through the channel, we pass Kraken Cycle Boats, which is $45 for a two-hour BYOB cycle and drink cruise. The Cross Bay Ferry makes four trips across the bay Wednesdays and Thursdays eight trips on Fridays and Saturdays, and six trips on Sundays. It is wheelchair accessible, and the trip is half price for people in wheelchairs. On this day, as if the ride couldn't get any better, the locals feeling pretty good, as on the trip back, Tom Brady making another last minute drive to propel the home team to victory. We arrive back at the pier. If you can schedule this trip during sunset, you'll be treated to a great view. We are arriving a little over an hour before sunset. Totally Tiki Tours offers public cruises, $50 for adults, $40 for children. Add $10 for sunset cruises. On the left, an ice skating rink on Spa Beach. We're gonna go check that out. We arrive back at the ferry terminal. Time to show you a few more things on the pier before sunset. In staying consistent with the art culture of St. Petersburg, the St. Pete Pier has art all around it. Perhaps the most impressive is this net sculpture called The Bending Arc by artist Janet Eckelman. It's 76 feet high. Kids love to play under it. So you might see a football or a shoe up there. Yep, we got a lot of shoes up there. We had to get them down with the football. The football got stuck, so we just did the whole thing as you can until eventually they all came down. At night, it lights up, just a sight to behold. Spa Beach sits on the north side of the pier, with limited wooden beach loungers. You can launch kayaks from here. Currently on Spa Beach is the seasonal ice rink, which runs from about mid-November to mid-January. Admission and skate rental is $17. It is part of Winter Beach that featured an arcade, a holiday concert, food, and coffee trailers. 
Where else can you go ice skating on the beach? St. Petersburg has got it going on. There are always seasonal events and festivals in downtown St. Petersburg. As the sun sets on St. Petersburg, more street performers to entertain. St. Pete has come a long way since Tony Janus made his historic flight. And now, another way to travel between the two cities on the bay. Those who live in the Tampa Bay region know what a treasure downtown St. Pete is. And now, thanks to the St. Pete Pier and the Cross Bay Ferry, this cultured city of art continues to grow as a great place to spend a day or an evening. For more on the rest of this great city, see our St. Petersburg License to Chill video. We are Tampa Aerial Media. Although this video was in our home base, we film travel videos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact info at tampaaerialmedia.com. The weather is now looking good in South Beach, so that is where we'll be headed for a full feature on Miami. From the west coast of Florida, I wish you blessings to you wherever you may be. See you next week on the Gold Coast.